So I'm the pharmacist over here, and we're going to talk about any, if you have any questions about anti-epileptic drugs, about their side effects, but you could also go and come and visit us at the Ask the Pharmacist booth that we have back there. Yeah. Anyone have any questions? Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. And I can't tell when and he's newly diagnosed. Mm -hmm. I can't tell whether he's having activities in the center of his brain mm -hmm. or whether it's the drugs. Drugs. And he ends up um, like walking into walls. He already had imbalance problems to begin with, but <coughs> so you can see it in yeah. his eyes. And yeah. sometimes I can't tell which pot it falls in. Okay. So what makes you think he's not metabolizing his drugs? Does Every he have? Okay. And so somebody mentioned to me, one nurse mentioned to me, um, that some people don't metabolize the drugs very well. Okay. How old is your son? He's 21. Okay. Um, and what medication? Trileptol and Zonagram. Zonagram. Yeah. Zonagram. So one thing about zonisamide is that a lot of it goes through the kidneys. It doesn't get metabolized. Some of it goes directly through the kidneys and it doesn't get metabolized. So uh, I'm wondering if sometimes what happens is that the dose, uh, it takes a while for um, a person's body to get acc accustomed or, you know, to the drug. So a lot of times when we start patients on medications, we start them at the lowest possible dose and then slowly titrate them up. But occasionally when we don't have the luxury to do that because the seizures are so severe or there's uh, consequences with the seizures that we're not willing to uh, bear with that so we titrate the drugs very fast so that might be something that is going on are those the only two medications he's on is there any yes. other medications he's on he's on oh he is on other medications okay okay do you want to come by the ask the pharmacist sure. booth and then we can go over it with you okay. yeah so uh, we have a whole team of pharmacists and we'll look through all the medications and give you the drug interactions what's going on how did i not see that I it's in the back over there oh, uh, is there a, like a cut out area with no it's not cut out if you if you get out of this door i mean if you get out of here right. you open the door and you'll see it right there it's ask the pharmacist on the back wall on the back Yes, oh, just come by there and yeah, sometimes when there's too many drugs, this is not a good forum to talk oh, about them. Really so it's a good idea to just go back there and we can go over drug by drug with you. Okay? All right. Any other questions? I guess not. Yeah. So I can talk a little bit about side effects with the anti-epileptic drugs. So you, the way I think about the side effects, most common side effects, this the sedation, the fatigue, the tiredness. Well, you are giving medications that are affecting the brain, that are slowing the brain down a little bit. They're impacting the electrical activity in the brain. So you are going to see those side effects. So it's very common. Most patients will develop a tolerance to it. But what I mean by that is eventually those side effects will not impact them as much. But in some cases, they don't because other drugs are being added or things are changing in their lifestyle. And, the, you know, so that might be or or they're just different and they never get used to those side effects. So we'll talk a little bit more about those things with you, ma'am, back there. Um, there are other kind of side effects that can occur also with uh, anti-epileptic drugs and medications in general. And we call them idiosyncratic side effects, which basically means that there is no explanation as to why the side effect occurred. Uh, but it does occur, um, and those are the side effects that we are usually are we are very concerned about, and they tend to be very rare. So, for an example, that would be a severe rash that you could get with some of the older anti-epileptic drugs or anti. Some people don't like us calling them anti-epileptic drugs; they prefer we call them anti-seizure drugs. So, um, so that's something else that we also see. Most of the drugs that we uh, that work on your seizures or work on your um, on your brain, they all, they all, as I said, have a tendency to make people very tired, very fatigued, affect their thinking. And um, I always tell patients to be prepared for that. And it becomes more critical when we are switching patients from one medication to another, when we are crossing things over, because you end up having 
two drugs on board instead of one. And usually when we are switching you from one drug to another, it's because the previous drug wasn't working very well or it was causing a lot of side effects. And in some cases, it is cost or insurance reasons because the insurance is not willing to cover the medication and is requesting that the patient go on another medication. That t does tend to happen sometimes. So when we are switching patients over, we always warn them that your side effect profile may get worse. You may see more side effects than you normally do, but eventually our hope is that your side effects will diminish and you will be able to tolerate the medications a lot more well, better. So that's uh, something I always like to tell my patients when I talk to them <coughs> about the medications. Anything else? I have a Okay. And is there, I mean, I know the medicine works, it helps her. Okay. But so can you come by, I mean, if you're willing to tell me what the medication is, then I can give you a solution. It, okay. Or you can come by and talk to me back there at Ask the Pharmacist booth, and we'll go over each medication to see which one it is. Well, I, I know it's probably either the, it's, I think it's Depakote. Depakote. Okay, so one of the reasons why Depakote does that is because uh, Depakote, when it comes into your body, when you're given Depakote, it gets broken down into 20 different products. Okay, all of those products do not are not don't have the anti ability to stop your seizures. Some of those products uh, are just like we call them inactive products that your body breaks down into, which is a good thing because you don't want a drug to stay in your system forever. Right? And then you basically throw it out through either your kidneys or your feces or your stool and the drugs just come out of your body. So one of those products, what it does is that it generates something called free radicals in your body. And in our body, we have a protective mechanism called the free radical scavenging enzyme system. And what that enzyme system does is that it goes and takes these free radicals and it binds with them and it basically makes them... Uh, I would say a good way to say it is that inactive or unable to harm. Basically, that's what it does. So free radicals are not good for us because what free radicals do is they uh, affect how your cells work, it affects your neurons, it affects not only your liver cells, but also cells, your blood cells and all different types of cells in your body. And we really don't want free radicals because they can cause harm and they can disrupt the cells. They can also cause cancer. They've been implicated for cancer too. So the good thing is that we have that scavenging enzyme system that breaks up, that scavenges all those free radicals and gets rid of them. But the bad news is that that free radical scavenging enzyme system uses trace minerals. Okay? Uh, and trace minerals are very important for that free radical scavenging enzyme system to, to work properly, to work in, a, in an optimal fashion. So the levels of your trace minerals go down and trace minerals are needed for the patency of your hair. It, it, that's what keeps your hair on your scalp. That's what keeps us, up, you know, keeps this hair strong. So your trace minerals go down and you start seeing hair fall with the Depakote. So what I usually recommend people is that if they have hair fall associated with Depakote or Valproic Acid or Depakine, those are the different names it goes by, is to just start taking a multivitamin with trace minerals. Right. So a good example of that is Centrum Silver. That has the trace minerals like selenium, zinc, and manganese that you can take and prevent the hair fall. Centrum Silver. Does that help you out a little bit with the... Okay. Sorry, I went a little bit too technical, but I just thought that since there's not a lot of questions, I might as well go into it. Yeah. Not really. I think, um, I don't think they do that. But what happens is that they may be inducing or increasing the breakdown of certain chemicals in our body. And that might be leading to some issues with metabolism that is possible, but they really don't take things away. Okay. So basically what you got to think about is that um, in, um, 
So what our liver does is basically it takes, it scavenges everything. It takes all the stuff that we consume, breaks it down to something good and throws, uh, big, breaks it down to something that is not going to affect us to making it inactive and then just basically throwing it out of our system, right? Um, and occasionally what will happen is that when, I'm going to go back and tell you a story about it from the time of the dinosaurs. And this story was told to me by my professor at University of Washington. So when dinosaurs roamed the earth, um, there were brightly colored vegetables and fruits. Um, if man, humans and, you know, human beings in our form or humanoids or whatever you call them in those days, if they consumed those brightly colored vegetables, um, they, were, they were considered poisonous to humans and they would die. You've heard of poisonous berries, right? So berries are brightly colored. And in those days when, when um, our ancestors, if they were to consume those berries, they wouldn't survive. It was poisonous. As time went on, our livers got stronger. And when, we would co when they would consume those berries, what would happen is that the liver would get what we call revved up in response to that stimulus of that berry or that brightly colored vegetable or the brightly colored foods, like carrots. You've heard of beta carotene being good for us. You've heard of berries being good for us. They, they are considered antioxidants. Well, the reason they are considered that is because what happens is that when you consume those foods, our livers get revved up, like an engine gets revved up. And when the liver gets revved up like an engine, it chews everything up. So it takes everything that we eat, breaks it down to inactive compounds, and we throw it out. So if we consume any, any, pest, any poisons, anything that's considered poisonous to our body, anything that's considered harmful to our body, the liver will just, the liver will just chew it up and throw it out. Okay? So this is what brightly colored fruits and vegetables did to us. And now we think it's a blessing for us. If we were to consume those, we are preventing cancer, we are preventing considerable number of conditions and diseases. They are considered, they are favorable to us now. So our livers, livers learn to live around them. Basically, we adapted to, the, to those food items and now they, are, they work well for us. I mean, in fact, it's good to consume those foods. So a lot of these anti-epileptic drugs, what they do is they rev the liver up and the liver starts working more um, and basically chews up all these drugs, breaks them down, and when the liver gets revved up, not only does it chew up all the drugs and throw them out of the system, because the liver is perceiving this drug as a poison. It's not as a, something that's harmful to us. Okay? But when the liver is revved up, it's also chewing up other good things that we're consuming. Okay? Uh, it's also chewing up our vitamin D, it's chewing up our folic acid, which is needed for our red blood cells, the vitamin D is needed for our bones. So a lot of times when we consume these anti-epileptic drugs, when we are put on these medications, the doctors will prescribe supplements for us, like vitamin D, pyridoxin, a lot of the other ones, you know, that I spoke about, like folic acid. Again, with Depakote, I gave you the example of trace minerals. So, all, so then we end up taking these supplements which will eventually keep us more healthy and also prevent any other major conditions that can occur with depletion of those uh, items in our body. So they don't directly do that. They may indirectly do it by basically revving the liver up a little bit. Like how you rev up an engine, that's how you got to think about it. Does that answer your question? I, I try to go into, make it as... Uh, uh, technical and co as uh, in common terms more as much as I could, yeah. As non-technical as possible is what I want, wanted to say. Yeah. Any other? That's okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So have you been stuck on a freeway? 
you have. All right. Um, so, assuming that there is a graduation, a university graduation, everybody is going to UCLA for graduation. We're all on the freeway. We have fixed number of lanes, right? But the number of cars on the freeway have exponentially increased. So the rate at which we are, the velocity at which we are driving, the speed at which we are driving has gone down. And it takes us longer to get to the destination. And the number of cars have gone up. So with Lamictal and Depakote, they, they go through the same pathway that breaks them down or chews them up into inactive compounds. And they're all competing for the same lane on that freeway to the liver, through the liver. And that's one of the reasons why your levels are going up. Okay. The same applies with revving the liver up or revving the, engi uh, the engine up. There's an extra lane on the freeway and the cars are clearing a lot more faster. Does that make sense? So that's what you've got to think about. The drugs are stuck on the freeway. They're not clearing. Yeah. Yeah. With the anti-seizure drugs, the, that slowing of the brain, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I have a different kid mm -hmm. than what I had before. It's, yeah. Is that ever going to? Like, he, I feel like he, there was a little bit of um, stabilization as time went on, but we've now had um, a good five months. Mm -hmm. I think you need, to, you need to talk to the neurologist about it and uh, they need to do an EEG to see if maybe there's something else going on. Uh, not only that, they need to may probably adjust the drugs so that uh, you know, it's not impacting his quality of life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fine balance between seizures and side effects, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think any more questions? I guess I can ask a question. Um, so my daughter went through that genetic test where they tested the um, more of the psychiatric medications. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she, she, she almost like metabolizes them too fast. Too quickly, yeah. Even, and that's what they found, which was interesting, because that's what they found when they did the uh, psychiatric medications, was mm -hmm. that they were useless for. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that this, when they have that sort of reaction with the psychiatric medications, do they so it really, have uh, So it, it really depends upon the pathway that the drug is metabolized through. So it really depends, like, because there are certain, uh, and it's all, it's genetically determined. And more and more I see a lot of uh, patients going through genetic testing to find out what works, what doesn't work. But it's very rare. It's still, um, I would say, in the infant stages of development, it's still like kind of, you know, we have a long way to go before we can find out. Because what happens is that there are four genes connected to one enzyme, and there are four enzymes connected to 20 genes. And, you know, it just doesn't, work that way anymore. We don't know. They're, what we call them is um, genetic polymorphisms, where there's a lot of different types of uh, combinations uh, of um, activity. Like some people are what we call ultra-fast metabolizers. Some are slow metabolizers. Some are normal metabolizers. So to just figure out all of those things, uh, it takes a little bit of time and getting to know the, not only the patient, but the family history and all of that stuff. So that can happen too. And uh, um, come by and we'll go over stuff over there. Because I think it's not right for me to talk about specifically your case. But if you come by, that way we can maintain the privacy too. Yeah. Anything else?
I have my whole crew here. You can ask them questions too. <laughs> They've come by. Those are my pharmacists who are training to work in neurology. We are a very rare breed. Yeah, yeah, we're a rare breed. We don't have that many who are interested in neurology. So it's a tough field. Epilepsy is a tough field, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's um, pharmacy schools only spend two hours on epilepsy, right? Two hours, not more than that. So, and think about it, there's so many drugs, there's 23, 24 medications and more coming. And these drugs are unique. They, you know, they're, um, they have unique clinical features, a lot of drug interactions, a lot of side effects. So, yeah. You can come by and visit us over there. We're there till tomorrow at four o'clock. So come by and ask a lot of questions. Yeah, it's very encouraging when you ask questions because they are encouraged to, to learn more and they get something out of it too. Okay, all right. I think we're more people coming in. Yeah. Hi. Did you have any questions or?